Hey guys! I got something here today to unbox that I've been waiting for for quite a while and it's finally arrived. Now as you might know, Diamond Select announced a Tron line of figures from the original movie Tron. Now these are not from the uh, Kingdom Hearts line which I reviewed previously. These are their own separate line. And uh, they announced these way back last year, like mid last year. I ordered them in May. They were supposed to arrive somewhere around September. Then I got pushed to November. Then I got pushed another month, another month, until finally here we are. Now these figures in particular were sold as a set with Sark, Flynn, and Tron. I haven't seen any listed for Ram or Yori, which is kind of weird, but I mean, I wouldn't be surprised with how little we usually get in terms of Tron merchandise anyway. But let's start here. Now, uh, since this figure is the one most prone to fall over in its packaging, let's do Sark first. Okay, got our initial packaging. They actually seem to be a little bit bigger than if you have the Kingdom Hearts uh, Sark and Tron set. So those figures are larger, which is nice. Um, it says collect them all, which <laughs> is very easy when you buy them as a set. This is a description of the story. Designed by Yuri Tming. Okay, so this is from Gentle Giant. I don't know if the Kingdom Hearts ones were sculpted by the same people. I've noticed some visual differences, so probably not. Okay. It's interesting that they come with their own distinct discs. These are not quite the same as uh, the other ones, although if you notice, Tron and uh, Sark's discs are similar, uh, have similar effects, just different colors, obviously. Now, I will be comparing uh, the Sark and Tron figures with the Kingdom Hearts ones, just for your reference. But um, so far, it appears that um, the paint job in general is still at least a little better than the <laughs> kind of uh, here and there paint job from those figures. I don't know if I'd say if it was necessarily flattering, but um, I do think that the face sculpt for Sark looks at least closer to what he actually looks like in the movie with this figure. It's a little weird how orange his paint job is. Um, similar to the Kingdom Hearts one, I was hoping it would be a bit more red. Uh, so that's, that's a little bit weird, but uh, it's okay. Um, overall though, I mean, there is nice attention to detail. I'm not noticing any particularly like uh, heinous paint job. Uh, on these really thin lines, so that's a pleasant surprise. His helmet is a little messy here, which is unfortunate. See this kind of wobbly line, and even this line work here doesn't really connect. One nice thing that the Kingdom Hearts figures definitely didn't have was removable discs, and so this one at least gives you that option. Got the disc right here. So that's nice that you can actually remove the discs for this one. It's a little light on extras, but it does come with two more grippy kind of hands, which I'm assuming will grip the disc decently. Let's try this out real quick. Yeah, it does look like it has a decent grip on the disc if you were going to do some like action poses. And of course we have these clear colored uh, action discs if you want to make it look like he's flinging them at his enemies. It also handily comes with a stand, which the Kingdom Hearts ones did not. And in terms of flexibility, this is always the part I hate the most because I don't want to break anything. It definitely has more bendability than the Kingdom Hearts Sark. Um, there's an interesting, for some reason, ability to twist here. I don't quite know why, but that's great, I guess. Um, it does not have a bended balls of the foot, but it does have a certain degree of flexibility with the ankle. It has, once again, once again, one of these double-jointed, oh god, these knees that I'm always afraid to bend. Oh, that does not. Oh god, it's the same problem. These really stiff joints that make me not want to bend this knee, so I'm not going to touch it. Let's see if we have any luck with this other one. Yeah, so this one bends. Why is it? Almost the exact same way with the other figure, with the other Sark. One of these never wants to bend, and the other one's okay bending. I have no idea why. So maybe that's the same with this one? Oh my god. Okay, after that experience I had with the TF2 Sniper, I'm not pushing it when it comes to uh, arm or leg joints anymore. It's so strange. You get quite a bit of uh, uh, hip rotation, which is interesting. So that's, that's good. 
You get some flexibility there. Um, you only get a certain degree of rotation here because these uh, shoulder pads are preventing him from really doing anything major. I can rotate it up at least, just not out. So that's its limitation. It looks, it looks like you should be able to rotate along this, uh, this crease here, which you kind of can, but again, these damn shoulder pads are really preventing you from being able to get a lot of leeway with that, so unfortunately that's kind of the limit. You get a certain degree of rotation with the head, although the helmet also restricts some movement that way as well. So let's do a direct comparison with... This is the Kingdom Hearts Sark. Now you may remember if you watched the previous review for this guy here, I wasn't thrilled with the paint job that they did for the Kingdom Hearts ones, because even, even here you can see uh, smudges on the face from the red paint, so that's not awesome. One thing, though, that is interesting, and I'm not sure how I feel, um, is the, the color of the faces. Now, this one has a weird reddish fleshy tone, which I was almost expecting it to be a bit more gray, like this one. Now, um, granted, I'm gonna sound like a terrible Tron fan, because it's been a little while since I've seen the original, but I do remember them being a bit paler uh, than this very pinkish red. You will be subject to immediate de-resolution. So that's a little not awesome <laughs> from my point of view, honestly. I almost like it better when they look more gray like this. So that's the one thing that this uh, Kingdom Hearts version kind of has the edge on. But as you'll notice, the paint job here is really inconsistent and not quite following the lines properly. So this one is kind of the clear winner in terms of the detail skill. But I will say that this figure has a clear size difference on this other one if we're comparing them here. So you'll get a little bang for your buck if you are getting the individual Sark figure as opposed to the Kingdom Hearts one. Now let's look at the guy who does not have a Kingdom Hearts 2 equivalent, which would be uh, the Infiltrator Flynn. Okay, so now, uh, unlike Tron and Sark, uh, Flynn has some unique uh, pieces. Actually, it looks like he only has the one action uh, disc as opposed to the other two that have two action discs. However, he has one that looks like it's interacting with somebody, although it's blue. So I guess the, it's, the implication is somehow he had a uh, tiff with Tron, and maybe they had a little mini fight or something like that. I'm not sure what the scenario would be. Now I will say, all things considered, it's a pretty good likeness for Jeff Bridges, you know, in a, a moderately priced figure. Um, what's very weird though is, I haven't posed this yet. This is just me taking it directly out of the box. He comes with what appears to be a very broken arm. <laughs> like it's literally bent the other way, so... The first thing you're going to want to do when you get it is bend it the right way and then fix it, perhaps? It's it's a little weird that they posed him like that, though. There, let's see. Looks a little bit better now. So it's very strange that they did that, because that's clearly the elbow joint and they had it reversed. See how this one doesn't look broken like that? So as I said, uh, paint job's a little iffy on those eyes, as you can see, but um, a decent representation of uh, Jeff Bridges. Now, it's hard to tell in this because of the lighting, but in real life, he has a quite pinkish, almost purplish face, which again, like Sark, I'm not thrilled about. It almost looks a little bit like um, if you saw my Team Fortress 2 figure review of the Spy. It's a little unnaturally pink. And again, from what I remember from the movie, it looked more of like a machine kind of gray for their faces, but maybe this is a stylistic interpretation, I don't know the really fine work on the um, on the details here in the paint job seems to be decent. There's, it's not perfect, but uh, compared to, again, the, the Kingdom Hearts ones, it certainly is better. Um, what's interesting is that he has his, his little fabric here, and I'm curious, they make it a soft plastic, so obviously the disc should fit in properly, because my concern initially was if this is a hard plastic, does it leave a big hole when his disc isn't in place? But it looks like they've solved that problem nicely by having it be a pliable plastic. Um, again, like, look, the, the detail on the back is quite nice. 
arms aren't bad. I unfortunately think that even with this pliable plastic, um, it hinders the movement in this arm, so you will probably not be doing any extreme action poses from his left arm, maybe from his right. Similar to Sark, he has a pretty wide rotation of his hips. He also has that weird <laughs> how it can rotate here for some reason. Um, and the double jointed knees, which his knees do not seem to nearly have the same stickiness that Sark's do, which is appreciated. Uh, and almost no real rotation, unfortunately, in this ankle. It's, it's, there's technically a joint here, as you can see, but it does almost nothing, so that is a shame. As I mentioned, he does come with two hands, although these are outward stretched hands as opposed to Sark's more like grippy hands for his discs, so these ones obviously will not be doing any real disc holding. In theory, the hands he already comes with should fit the bill in terms of being able to hold his disc. And last but not least, because you're never last to me, Tron, is Tron! As I mentioned, uh, with the other figures, we can already tell that his face is quite uh, pinkish, almost purplish, compared to um, the Kingdom Hearts one. Okay. Now this may be a good or a bad thing for you, depending on your preference, but uh, this doesn't actually look a whole lot like Bruce Boxleitner. Um, whereas Flynn looked decently like Jeff Bridges, so... Once again, Tron in his own figures looks pretty generic, I would say. Um, he had a bit of personality in his Kingdom Hearts figure, but both of them really just look like they could be anybody. Um, he also has, for some reason, two extra sets of hands that the other characters do not. Everyone else just has two hands, he gets four. So, yay, Tron! <laughs> now let's open him up and check him out. Okay. Let's fix this arm first, because it's bothering me. He almost has kind of the best of both worlds, because he has the shorter shoulder plates like Flynn does, so he's not restricted the way Sark is uh, in terms of his arm movement. Well, I spoke too soon. He's a little restricted, because see, I can't bend it up, but at least it it's not quite as bad for the other uh, rotations here. So, not too bad in that regard. Um, he has quite the central rotation here for his torso at the cost of um, his full insignia being slightly cut into, which is a strange choice. I don't know if I necessarily like that. It also weirdly draws attention to his abs, so it kind of makes it look like this is some kind of midriff shirt in a way. It's a little distracting to me now. Now I will not be able to unsee that. Um, he also has the same um, wide hip rotation as the other two, and the same legs and their rotation. Unfortunately, oh no, actually, okay, I take it back. The rotation of his um, ankles is better than Flynn's, so that's good. I'm sure the intention here is that he should be the most actively posed model out of the three of them, because he is Tron after all. So. Um, we'd be expecting some cool poses out of him. A uh, good neck rotation, which I might have forgotten to do with Flynn, but they're both set up similarly where the rotation is just under their ear instead of with Sark where it's his entire head. But yeah, um, a decent strong face. I don't know why he looks a little concerned. It might have looked cooler if he looked more badass and, and stern, perhaps, instead of like worried. Uh, but I will say, if you notice all the little details here on his head and his back, they've been well transferred and I think those are pretty well done. Like, this detail here in particular, compared to the uh, Kingdom Hearts one, which I'll show in a second, uh, is far better in my opinion. Like, there's a lot of little details here uh, that at least, <laughs> for the most part, stay within their respective grooves, so that's appreciated. And once again, you'll see that if you've got the Kingdom Hearts one, there's quite the size difference if I'm, if I'm comparing heights here. Um, so that's, that's interesting in, in itself. They both have pretty distant, blank faces, 
but I will say that there's something about, maybe because his, his eyebrows are a little high on here, as opposed to them being more flat here, where um, Kingdom Hearts Tron seems a little more stern than the more scared or worried looking um, original Tron. As you'll notice, this is what I was saying about the color scheme too, because see how this one looks practically pink purple, and this is more white. And that's one thing I actually kind of like better on this one. I sort of like this more gray tone on his clothing than this one, which is more of just an off-white. But it's just uh, my own personal preference. As you notice, they have their own unique differences even here, which I think carries across more to his design uh, from Kingdom Hearts as opposed to his design from the movies. But the one big benefit is that he can actually have a removable disc. So I think that's something that was sorely lacking from the Kingdom Hearts ones. What's weird though is that he comes with a lot of strange poses. Like this one is like this kind of hand as opposed to more of a cupped hand like a Sark had. My assumption is maybe this is what you should have him hold so it looks like he is doing his iconic pose. Uh, which is why it looks a little bit more arched in the upper fingers. But keep in mind, if you have all three figures, these hands really should be interchangeable with all of them because there's nothing particularly unique about these sockets. So if you want, you could swap them out with either one if you're choosing. And of course, he has his individual uh, colored action discs. Now this one already looks like it's zooming off like a meteor, so I'm not really sure how you would set this up in his hand. This one looks a bit more clearly like as if he was in, in the midst of swinging his arm, so maybe I would use this one a little more often. Okay, so there you have it. Now, in the process of getting these guys into these poses, I sort of found out a few things that are worth mentioning towards the end here. Um, first of all, the uh, the discs on their backs do indeed click into place, but not super neatly, so you're going to have to kind of push them a little intensely and hopefully not scratch any of the de detailing on their backs in the process. The other thing to notice is that even though they come with hands that are curved to facilitate uh, using the disc, often they don't snap together quite well, and I really wish that they would have given poses like this where the disc would, act, would, would have cleanly uh, fit into place instead of sliding around because obviously you're not going to be able to get to do any cool action poses if it's constantly falling out of their hands. So that was a big uh, negative spot for me. Um, the other thing too is similar to that, these poses, uh, these action pose uh, discs don't work super great in their hands. So I'm not sure if people are using essentially like a little rubber cement or some kind of shit to make them stay in people's uh, palms but you're gonna have to do something if you're gonna want to take advantage of these uh, these more uh, dynamic discs. The other last thing I'd like to say, and this is more towards Diamond or whoever uh, creates Tron figures in the future, look, if you're gonna make a Tron figure and you know that you want him to do the iconic pose, please try to facilitate that because what I realize is none of their necks look up. So you can't have him look up properly without bending his entire torso. And also, when you raise his arms, which I'm going to do here without hopefully ruining his pose, they don't go in enough, as you'll see, to facilitate holding the disc with both hands, because the disc just falls out every time. So without some clever, slight breaking of the figure, you're not really going to get that iconic pose that uh, I'm sure every collector is going to try to attempt with this figure, unfortunately. Uh, so those are some takeaways that you should be aware of. Other than that, though, I mean, they're good-looking figures. Oops, and now the disc has already <laughs> come off of the back, as I mentioned. So you really had to push it into place there. Um, they are good-looking figures. Uh, maybe they aren't the best functioning figures in terms of um, action poses, if, if that's your thing when you're, when you're displaying these. Like, sometimes I wonder if it's a lot of these companies just making things with set joints and not really thinking about how to effectively uh, design them for actual realistic posing and not just for the sake of saying hey they're posable see we put in joints w what's wrong you can't pose them 
but yeah, so that would be a concern if you actually wanted to get serious poses out of them. If you're gonna put them in a general standing pose with maybe a disc in hand and like a, a Flynn kind of, hey, what's going on sort of uh, expression like this, then you're fine. If you want anything more dynamic, you're gonna have to struggle with the, the action figure for a little bit. But considering that there aren't a lot of Tron figures out there anyway, you may feel if you are a real, you know, Tron fan that this might be your only option and you kind of have to get them to support the franchise. So you're kind of stuck between a rock and a hard place, honestly, the way I was. But I am glad that I got these eventually. And I'm kind of irritated that it took forever for them to finally ship. Keeping in mind that anyone that had also pre-ordered them along with me had initially been promised pieces of a recognizer, which they then removed from the package set. This recognizer in the back is actually one that I have from the Kubrick set of Tron figures. All in all though, I mean, they're not terrible figures. They're uh, decently constructed. For the price point, they are nice to display. And I think if you are a big Tron fan and Tron collector, it's usually hard to find good Tron merchandise anyway, so it might be one of those cases where you want to just pick it up just to be safe. Um, and it wouldn't be the worst thing in the world if you pick these up. But I would say, keeping those things in mind that I mentioned about posing and difficulty with using the accessories, that's something you may want to consider. And there you have it. These are the Diamond Select Tron figures with the special edition uh, Infiltrator Flynn if you order it online. That's all for now. I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching.